Hello viewers, welcome to the Omega Luke Gaming Channel for another Tactic Tester. My friend Ryan Cassidy has produced this tactic, it is called Lucifer's Wrath and you can find it on the Discord underneath hashtag fire emoji Ryan's Tactics. But before we take a look, if you can please consider smashing that like button, leave a comment down below whether you like this tactic or if you used it before, what you think stand out about this tactic, and of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already. We're on really close route now to 15,000 subscribers, about to hit 14k as I'm recording this, so I'm absolutely loving the growth that this channel has had. Thank you to everyone who is still putting up with the community post. That's just a YouTube thing right now. People are realizing it's really actually helping their channel. So you're probably getting spammed with loads of them. Uh, you can ignore them or it's just literally a couple of clicks. It really does actually help my channel. So thank you everyone who has taken part in those polls. I'm, I'm sorry for keep bothering you with them. So like I mentioned, this tactic managed to get Fulham fourth place. Now a lot of these aren't actually simulations. Ryan has actually played through a lot of these games throughout all three of the, the teams that you're going to see, including using instant result buttons and actually playing using human touch. So if you're also doing the same, you might find the same thing about this. Now what Ryan has told me about this tactic we'll take a look at this tactic first before we talk about that we can see it's a narrow diamond formation slightly different I'm a big fan we have the deep line playmaker on support we have a trekker t-step on attack the good combination of advanced forward and a complete forward Mazala on attack box to box midfield I'm going to go through and show you that's not what I wanted to do I'm going to go through and show you all of the uh, there we go. All of the opposition or the team instructions, the player instructions, so you can see each one. So when you're actually, if you don't download this tactic, you can copy it yourself just by doing this. So if you're not a big fan of Discord, then you can just do it this way. However, I do implore you, Discord is a free app. It's a great way to find out when I'm going live. It's a good way to find out when my videos come up and you get all the free tactics downloads. You get the free... Um, you get the free training schedules, you get the World Super League information that might be coming out very soon. Not to mention there's also community save in there right now. Headlined by my friend Genki, one of my mods, he is setting up a community save where every three months you pass the save on to somebody else and see how you get along. It's quite fun. So lots, what I'm trying to say is lots of reasons to be in the Discord, not only just to get this tactic. So an attacking mentality. Attack width is obviously narrow, we're playing with a very narrow diamond formation, passing the ball into space, we're playing through the midfield, which makes sense. We are also underlapping in the midfield, which did actually shock me when I seen this. I thought maybe your wide your your widest players, the, the fullbacks, would be the players who would give you width. But no, not so much. Underlapping on both sides, playing out of defense. We were using slightly more directness and an extremely high tempo. Uh, low crosses into the box, that's Ryan Cassidy's favourites, working the ball into the box, running at the defence. Now, in transition, we take a look at this, it is a Gagan Press formation, uh, which basically a lot of people always say, what is Gagan Press? Is it Gagan Press? All it is, if you're doing this on Xbox, is just these two selected, that makes it a Gagan Press. Okay, without that, it's not Gagan Press. With that, it is. So when people go, well, when I set up a preset, and it asks me to set up a new tactic, what tactical style am I using? The tactical style's results to this. If you select Gag and Press, it will tell you to do this. If you do something different, Tika Taka, it will do something different, like hold shape, for instance. Anyway, distributing the ball quickly, we're using that to the centre-backs, taking short kicks. Out of possession, one of the most important parts of the game now. Using the offside trap, we are using a much higher line of engagement, but with a standard defensive line. This kind of makes sense to me because we are already crowding the midfield. We don't want to also crowd the length of the pitch as well by setting this to higher. So that makes sense to me that that is set at a defensive line. We're also forcing the opposition outside, which also makes sense because we've got the majority of our team in the middle. We want them to be playing on the outside. We're using tighter marking, extremely urgent press and intensity, preventing the short goal kick distribution. And we're getting stuck in. Which leads me on to the point about the tactic. What you're going to require for this tactic to work to its full potential and get the players around for this tactic. So the tactic is a very hard working tactic. So you're going to need a good squad. Good technical players, hard working technical players with good passing ability, off the ball and vision as kind of your key attributes to look out for when 
signing new players for these tactic roles. It's also quite free flowing as well, especially when in transition. So the main aim is basically to swarm those central areas, like we've mentioned there. We're crowding those central areas, overloading the midfield in the center of the pitch and making sure the opposition just can't handle us and gaining that possession back, winning the ball and then attacking straight away. He also makes a suggestion to have adequate squad cover. Like I mentioned, you might get a lot of discipline with yellow cards. We're getting stuck in. We're crowding the midfield, not to mention it's hard work. And so you might need to rest a few players every now and then. So make sure you have good, adequate squad cover. So you also need the, the quite versatile players, especially in roles like the Trekatista. The Trekatista on attack really is a player that can also play well, who has the attributes to be good up front, but also good to be centre midfield. They need to be good at passing and pressing, so they need to be slightly aggressive, of course, decent passing, and they are going to be in attacking position, so good dribbling and good finishing, not to mention the good mental attributes that go along with that. Anticipation, off the ball, like we mentioned before, and hard work. So in the Premier League then, Liverpool have won it, but if we do take a look at the stages here, we can see Fulham, they played 38, they... Everyone plays 38, Luke. That's the way the season works. Out of those 38, they lost 10 games, but they only drew four and they won 24. So they managed to finish finish in fourth place, two points above Manchester City of all teams. They finish above Manchester City, Arsenal and Tottenham there, who finish all in the Europa League and EC2 spots. So you've got to be happy with that. Let's have a look at the statistics, though, because we had the second amount of goals scored in the league with 79 for a team like Fulham. Got to be happy with that. Uh, that's really good. We also had the most tackles won, and that's because we're getting stuck in, which might mean that we have a lot of yellow cards, but that's fine. Uh, fewest conceded with joint fifth place there. Possession, I imagine we are nowhere near the possession because it is a Gagan press. Yes, down in 11th. Yellow cards, like I mentioned, you're going to get a lot of them. 89 in total for Fulham, the second highest in the league. Red cards, however, joint sixth with just two across the whole season. So it's not all bad, if you ask me, but that's kind of the the gist of the statistics there. But what I did find quite interesting was that Adamola Luckman managed to score 23 goals in the season, making him the highest top scorer. Fifth place was Alexander Mitrovic with 16. So again, they also did really well. Anguissa, we can see how many tackles were won. The three top three players were the Fulham players. The third place, and I really wanted to make this a point, is Tom Kearney. Now, why is that quite important? Well, Anthony Robertson is playing in the inverted left back. Anguissa, he is playing in the box box midfielder. That makes sense. But Tom Kearney is playing in the Trekatista role and he has the third most tackles in the whole league. That's why you need a very good Trekatista on attack that can play in centre midfield and be a good striker. Even more so, Tom Kearney even had the longest distance covered throughout the whole league. And not even a fallen player was anywhere near him until we got to Anguisa, who was down in 15th place. So he actually covered seven kilometers more than Dwight McNeil, who is a winger. And that's kind of expected in that Trekatista role, a really underrated role. Key passes, he was also there in third place, 126 key passes. Only Bruno Fernandes and Kevin De Bruyne, one of the two best centre attacking midfielders in the game, is above him. So that's quite phenomenal if you ask me. So we've taken a look at Fulham, who is more of a relegation candidate for this tactic. It's time now to see what a mid-table team is like and also what an elite team is like, just so we cover all grounds. So the mid-table team that Ryan Cassidy has picked is Real Batiste. I'm happy with that because they actually have a fantastic team for this formation. Abil Fakir is phenomenal in that advanced forward role. 47 goals in total, 7.62 average rating. Now, the two players who actually played in that Trekatista role, one being Lalaise, the other being Joaquin. Now, Joaquin is 39 years of age, so maybe after playing him so many times there, we need to give him a bit of a break. But he actually played the most in that Trekatista role in this formation throughout this season. He only missed a few games where Linnaeus has actually played. So this is a little bit different. It should really be like that. That's how we should be looking at this. So let's take a look at the league campaign because we've actually done really well here, finishing above Athletic Club, Real Madrid, and Athletic Madrid, Atletico Madrid finishing in second place here, 78 points only behind Barcelona. Lost eight games, who you can see there against there, drew six and won 24. Nabil Fakir scored 45 goals in a 38 league campaign. 
That's insane. He also finished second only to Messi in average rating. And Canales finished in third place of the assist. Lionel Messi's had a fantastic year, as you can see, and as expected. But what is quite remarkable is that Real Betis actually scored the most goals in this league campaign. They scored 27 goals, more than Barcelona did, 107 in total. They were also joint seventh in the, the, mo the fewest shots against. They won the most tackles again. First place, 988. This all kind of making sense now in having a look at what happened. Again, they had the most yellow cards, highlighting that you will need a bigger squad. But now we look at the elite club. And it's no surprise that being a Liverpool fan, Ryan has picked Liverpool. And it's worked out quite well. Because 105 points, they dominated the league, winning it by 29 points in total. That is still difficult to do for any Premier League side. They only lost one game to Wolves. Dave has a party, likes this, and three draws, one against Everton, one against Chelsea, and one against Tottenham. So, you like to think, really, considering they scored 133 goals, 13 of them were against Sheffield United alone, and 11 against Southampton, 9 nil anyone, um, then in these draws were basically just because they just had a bad day at the shooting range. In other competitions, they finished runners-up in the Champions League. They won the FA Cup as well and knocked out the fourth round by Chelsea in that Carabao Cup. It's also no surprise in that in the goals, it is dominated by Liverpool's players. Mo Salah picking up 41 of them. Sadio Mane, who's playing the complete forward role, doesn't tend to score as many goals usually. Scored 25. Mo Salah, highest average rating. Mane right behind him. And the assist dominated by those Liverpool players. Andy Robertson with 15, Mane with 15, Thiago with 12. What is quite outstanding with this is the positions that they are playing. If we look at this, Ryan has set it up so Trent is playing on the left and Andy Robertson is playing on the right. The reason for that is because they are using the inverted wing back role. They are actually cutting in, in on the inside when they are on the attack. So when they are back they're fine, but when they are attacking, they're going forward, they're cutting on the inside onto their strongest foot, and, uh, well, Andy Robertson managed to also score seven goals. Trent managed to score five. That's no surprising, but of course, Andy Robertson picking up the third most or second most assists in the league, playing at right back. And if we do look at an assist, he actually had the most assists for Liverpool across the whole season, and Trent was there with 19, just, well, joint second behind Sadio Mane. So, the fact that they're playing on opposite sides has actually worked out because they are using that inverted role. Thiago, we looked at him briefly. He was playing in that Trek Atista role. He has eight goals and 17 assists. Phenomenal, really, for the Thiago in that Trek Atista role. You've got to be happy with that. It's no surprises that in the team overview, it is completely dominated by Liverpool here. Uh, and probably on the player overview too, we have a lot of players in the most assists, in the most player of the matches, most shots. Key passes was Trent in that inverted fullback role. Fewest conceded, Allison. Obviously, it makes sense to me. Let's take a look a little bit more into it, though. If we can have a look maybe at crosses, pass completion, passes attempt, clear-cut chances created. There it is, Trent. He created six clear-cut chances. Kind of a broken stat, to be honest, I think. But key passes, here we go. This is what we like. Trent had the most key passes, 162. Andy Robertson there in sixth place with 108. So those fullbacks, really important. If you can get the best fullbacks in the league, you will dominate with this formation. And if we take a look at the most assists per 90 minutes, this is actually quite a telling feat because look how many Liverpool players are in the top, well, 11, if you count 11. It, normally you go top 10, but Roberto Firmino is also there. Naby Keita, Trent, Sadio Mane, Thiago and Andrew Robertson, all in the top 10 slash 11. So there we have it. Yet again, Ryan Cassie has done phenomenal work with a new tactic. Of course, like I mentioned before, you can find that tactic in the description in the Discord. Ryan's tactics on the left-hand side. Find it there. That's where you can download it. Or you can just copy it across from what I've shown you here. So if you want to see more tactics just like this one, let me know down in the comments. I know we've done a lot of player spotlights recently, but some people like to see these tactic videos, maybe not as much as the one of kids spotlights anymore. I've kind of found my niche now, but I still like to do these tactic testers. And especially when I have a man like Ryan Cassidy who can produce some of the best tactics around. Phantom Menace is still amazing in this game, yet let alone last game. All the tactics he created in FM20 have transferred across and been really good in FM21. So chances are, if you if you liked one from last season, then you might like 
that one this year as well. So make sure you like the video, make sure you're subscribed, hit that notification bell turned on. Thank you everyone for taking part in the polls and I'll see you very soon, probably tomorrow, for another episode. Thank you very much. Bye bye.